Lights up. William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached. But soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility. Traits uncommon in the fires of perdition. The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. And while happy endings were not a thing found in hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for companies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of hell, the bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the Tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. So oh, Shakespeare called forth the Deus Ex Machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of Horse Stop.
Lights up. The mortal stands in the training grounds, eager to try out his new force stomp power on the group of demons in front of them. No pity for the mortal. Act one, scene two. In which our protagonist kills more. Act two. In which our protagonist is greeted by foul imps. Our protagonist learns that Force Stomp even works on flying enemies, enabling them to remove a dark insider's shield. The day is won, and the curtain closes on our noble hero. Looking forward to stretching my wings. Pick it up. Beep, beep, beep. What, if they wanted to torture you, why'd they use the short version of the song? This... Short version? Oh yeah! The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish! The homo on the bus goes hey, hey, hey!
Let us return to my castle, so we may plot our next steps in proper surrounds. Johnny led Vlad back to his castle, which since his incarceration became a haven for frat parties and squatters. But the systematic impaling of trespassers would have to wait. Vlad was a man of his word, and was eager to provide intel that could aid in hobbling Satan's armies. Upon you, the Stygian cold fire. you to this inferno to teach you about the power I have granted you. Cold fire is an aura, which means you must activate the power and get close to an enemy before they will feel the cold embrace of the Stygian flames. Try it against these demons. Anyone got a mob? While I understand what you you must use cold fire to defeat the enemy. It's not your way. Well done, my friend. Now here comes a dark inciter. Use your aura, then get close to him to take down the... You've done it. Doesn't it feel good to watch an enemy burn? <laughs> 